Well, the U.S. is grappling with how it will generate enough power to run the AI boom. Our own Josh Saul reported yesterday that regulators in Ohio, which is a key data center market, ruled that data centers will have to pay for some of the energy requests, regardless of whether the electricity ends up being needed. The way that data centers pay for power has become a controversial point as the facilities consume more electricity, forcing costly infrastructure spending on new transmission lines and power plants. Well, our next guest is trying to make data centers a bit more efficient. Brian Casey is the CEO of ECM. The company designs PCB Stator Electric Motors, partners with companies such as L3 Harris, East West Manufacturing Group, Thrustmaster, and more. Brian joins us from Massachusetts. Brian, good to have you back on the program. It's been over a year since we last spoke to you. I, I want you, please, to remind everybody where exactly your company plays because you essentially offer this software solution this sort of full stack solution when it comes to designing something that's incredibly important to everyday use yeah thanks first off thanks tim thanks for having us on again it's great to be with you guys um so our software ultimately um materializes uh with our clients who are you know large hvac manufacturers large pump manufacturers um, and ultimately they're downstream and they're the ones that are doing the cooling and moving the fluids around in these large data centers. So data center, the data center business is not your only business. I mean, we didn't even, I don't think no. the last time we even talked about data centers last time you were on. No, we didn't. What, what is no, the, so what is I the mean, biggest portion of your business? Um, I, you know, fittingly it's HVAC is probably the HVAC market is probably one of the larger markets we serve. Um, and like I said, that's going in condensers, plenum fans, big kind of air movement stuff. And those clients, they ultimately um, will serve large industrials, you know, hospitals, institutions, colleges, and of course, our, our friends in the raised floor environment data centers. Okay. So I hope we don't sound like idiots, but we spent a fair amount of time nope. on our planning call. Wait, just we, wait till we speak and, before and we, you say no, Brian. And we love talking to you. But <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you might just want to wait well, a minute. Well, you're in good company here. So. No, 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 no. But it's just we were trying to really truly understand what you guys do so that as we talk with you and, and the Bloomberg audience listens. I mean, you guys are manufacturer? No, so uh, you think of um, any electric motor that's out there in the world right now. It's made with a, with a copper winding, you know, um, uh, expensive kind of copper, as we know, it's 50% more mm -hmm. expensive today than it was this morning. <laughs> um, and we, we remove all of that madness of windings and complex kind of infrastructure to build that. And we, we utilize printed circuit boards, which we see right here, the, like the kind of the green board you see back of the computer. Right. And we use it, we use it in etchings. And I'm going to turn this in the profile so your users can see it. And those that are listening, this is super ultra thin. Wow. So we're we are like, you know, seven to eight percent of the total copper used in a traditional wound motor. Um, and as a result of that, our software helps people print these things. They actually print these at a PCB house. And then our clients who have mechanical skills and the ability to assemble, take these take these units and they make them into electric motors that are used in gaming, robotics, HVAC pumps. Um, automation, haptics. Um, so we have a pretty diverse group of clients. Um, but as far as our discussion today, we do a lot of a lot of uh, our work does support HVAC and air movement, which makes sense in terms of all the data centers that are being that are being pulled out. For those who are listening on radio, and and you did a great job, Brian, of saying how thin it is. But that's basically it. It was like a thin disc. Like if we all just think Cor about, I don't yeah. even, you know, it's it's pretty flat. So, um, you know, to get Very to give flat. us an idea. Um, well, wait a minute. So how much of your business is increasingly supporting HVAC for those data centers, right? That we know we've all talked about the amount of computing that's going on. It creates a ton of heat. How much of that is that where a lot of growth is right now? Just give us an idea. Yeah. I think for us, uh, you know, we, our growth is really around um, businesses and enterprises that want to innovate. Mm -hmm. So we're fortunate to have a couple of uh, key players in the HVAC air movement space that are very innovative. They put a lot of money into R&D. They've been working with our technology for several years, and they're now commercializing it with their distributors and with their clients. 
Um, I mean, the data center market, when I was I was fortunate to be involved with it, uh, when I was the CEO of a company called Source One, which got acquired by Veolia, and you know, we had energized 35, 50 million square feet of data center space. But back then, you know, and this is the early 2000s, a 50,000 square foot data center was big. But now that's a very small data center. And you're looking at most data centers now they're being built are the size of a Walmart. And there's enough energy in there. So next time you see a Walmart, that's enough energy um, for both the, the towns of Rockville and Garden City. So picture, wow. picture a bedroom community outside of New York of 50,000 people and everything that they use, all those residences, all those businesses would, would use the same amount of power that you would see in, um, in a Walmart, a building that size. That's how, you know, when people throw the numbers around, that's how exponentially big this, this, this power consumption is. And in our technology, in some small way, we're able to address it at the facility level with, with very efficient motors. So we're, we're super tight super light so this way you can fit you can actually move more air and then recently we've we filed some additional kind of technology and patents where we can actually offer cooling at the chip level within these within these like servers so if you guys went into a data center you would see thousands and thousands of what they look like these college refrigerators and inside them are all these um servers and basically computers right. and inside the computers are a bunch of chips and the chips need to get the heat out so we actually have technology now so we can do everything on the macro level mm. from large giant pumps and big plenum hvac fans all the way down to the chip board level where we can actually place our etching within that integrated circuit and offer direct cooling on the chips so for us you know we hear about data center explosion we're getting it on both ends it's going to be it's going to be um you know rosy days for us hey hey brian one reason we like to talk to folks like you who serve all these different customers just to get a gauge on how these customers are, are spending money, how they're buying. What, what's mm -hmm. the, what's the strength of your order book right now compared to say six months ago? Oh, that's a great question. You know, we got a little headwind early in the year where we have the, you know, change in the administration and a little bit of uh, tariff stuff, but that's settled down. So my guess is we're going to grow 50, 60% year over year. Wow. We've done that the last couple of years. Um, and again, I think that kind of resonates with the fortunate clientele that we have, which is they're always innovating. Even if there's bumps in the economy, they're always innovating. And when you see kind of volatility in the marketplace, because our offering is software, we kind of bust through all those physical barriers, right? So if we have a client that's, um, that, has a, that has a facility in, in, you know, in Europe where it's unfavorable tax treatment or unfavorable tariff treatment, well, our our binary file can be sent to Vietnam or it can be sent to, you know, Wisconsin. Right. So they're able to kind of like move pretty quickly. But they're not going to order. Some, they're not going to use your software if they have nothing to build because their orders have dried up. Uh, correct. But I'm saying what they what they can do is if they don't want to be stuck to a certain geography, uh, I see. what our what our technology allows them to do is to assemble these the physical motor and the, the circuit board that's associated with it anywhere in the world. Okay, that makes so, sense. And that's pretty, that's pretty empowering. So can I understand, uh, I want to understand. So your advantage, if we, you know, cut to the chase, is that you guys don't need copper windings. Correct. Which we know copper Great is expensive point, and it's a lot more expensive than it was based on the latest tariffs from, from President Trump. At the same time, you make things more efficient at a time when we Correct. know the power demand is amping up exponentially, right? A lot of it because of data centers. And so if we can make things more efficient, that's going to be better on so many different levels in terms of cost, in terms of environmental impact, a lot of things. It, those are the two key advantages. Yeah. And one of the big drivers for us that our clients select us on is, is form factor. So because we we are ultra thin and ultra lightweight, well, you can fit, you know, you can have more production in the same footprint. Mm -hmm. um, so in a, in a data center environment, you know, you've invested, you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in a facility. And if we're able to, you know, improve the program space, i.e. give them more room to put more servers, because the, the our clients who are using the technology are able to reduce their footprint on their big plenum fans, and we're talking like a 50, 60% weight savings in, right. in, in, 
area savings, like all of a sudden they're able to, you know, fit more product inside their program space. Brian, so, you know, we may be downstream, but we have a we have a, a very significant impact on these on these um, on these other businesses. Got to ask you because you're at this intersection of energy and technology. Right. And I just think about yes. Tim and I talk about it all the time. AI, certainly every day in terms of the demand that just seems to continue to grow, grow, grow. And then the energy needs to meant it to, to, to meet it, to be able to do it. Um, are we going to have a crisis of some sort? <laughs> it's it's literally gone nuclear and that's no pun intended as as you guys But that's going to take time so that's why I'm saying is there going to be some sort of crisis where there isn't going to be enough power to meet everything that's needed or the demand I think that you are you util, our friends the utility companies are going to are, are going to be in for um you know I think some some tough planning the power pools are going to have some tough planning to do like cuz you know a, a, like a, a you picture a building the size of Walmart and all of a sudden they're like, well, I want 80 megawatts. Mm. Like, that's just like, we throw those numbers around and people are like, oh, okay, 80 megawatts, what is that? Well, like I said, it's like it's it's like a small yeah. city of 100,000 people. So that's that's a lot of planning, a lot of effort in the utility company. I think mm -hmm. what the big kind yeah. of uh, data centers are doing, like DC Blocks and Crusoe and Amazon Got it. and our friends at Meta, yeah. they're just taking matters in their own hands. They're building their own generation sources. Yeah, it's 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 just kind of all interesting how this is merging together. Brian, come back soon. Brian Casey, Chief Executive Officer of ECM. Coming up next, Eric Adams, some highlights from our interview earlier on Bloomberg.